Hey, Coach Trinkett, could you give us an overview of how spring practice has gone for you as far as implementing your system, the feedback you've gotten from players, just all the vibes that you've gotten thus far early in the spring? Sure, absolutely. Uh, there's there's a lot of carryover as far as – so for the guys, there's been very little transition on that aspect. Well, a lot, if there's been any transition, it's been maybe – some details here and details there on how we do some things that may have been a little bit different from before. The guys have been very receptive. They've been working their tails off. Really excited about the, the buy-in aspect on that. Right now, I would say the uh, it's, they're being challenged uh, uh, mentally, not only physically, but mentally. In the sense that we're, it practice is very intense. And so for them, like we want to make practice at first. So if you're in those situations, how are you going to react and respond? And that's a, a huge evaluation. Rather than waiting and everything's happy, go lucky, then all of a sudden you play a game and something happens, good or bad, you, you already know how a guy's going to respond right now. So now that we know, now it's, all right, well, if it was great, reinforce it, show it, teach off of it. If it wasn't, it's corrected and show them how. Look, if this happens, this is what's got to happen next. And make sure we keep putting them in those situations so they continue to know how to react when something good or bad happens. So right now, I think the intensity has been very high at practice, which is great. That's what we wanted. Um, it's not it, It's not easy at all. It's pretty physical today, which is what you want. So I'm excited to go up there and see the film. And one more thing, if I could, when, you know, when you're a carryover coach, you know, you have a history with players, you know what they're like on their good days and their bad days, et cetera. You know, you've come in, you've watched film. I'm sure you've heard some things about what guys are like, but What's it like when you, you really don't have that history and you're, you're just kind of laying, trying to lay down new things all around, um, you know, are guys more on point, you think, because they want to make sure they're good with you? Or what's the relationship like as you kind of build it from the ground up? I think early on, everyone wants to please. And, and early on, it, this is reality. This is humans. You know, like you, like you get on the suit, I got somebody new here. And all of a sudden, that's from a place perspective. It's like, okay, I want to get on his good side. I want to do everything like this. And then all of a sudden, if something adverse happens, are you still that mentality? Or is it now it's like, do we blame, complain, or defend our actions, whatever it may be? And, again, that's, that's part of our job is when something great happens, we want to highlight that, celebrate it, and make sure everyone knows, like, this is the standard. But if it's something negative that happens, like, okay, this is not tolerable. This is not okay. We can, This will not happen for us. Like, you, we will not allow this on the field. And it's been more the previous of like the guys have done really good for three or four times. But whenever an opportunity to teach off of, of a negative situation, that's where you see, you know, again, so far it's been great. There's been like the guys want to get better. They want to learn. They want to do right. And I think sometimes they're, they're naturally like if you're trying to do right, it doesn't happen. You get internally frustrated. But then it's, again, how do you handle it? Do you let it affect you? Or can you harden up and say, okay, next play, let's go. You know, so that's really a lot of what the last first six days been like. Is the coach Scott set up his practice schedule where so we kind of put some adversity in, and I love how we responded today. It wasn't perfect, but we got some good response. Thank you, Leo Haggerty. Coach, you've got some players now in their third, fourth, fifth year. Uh, this is like their third language on offense. You got to get them to Rosetta Stone so they can figure out what's going on on offense. Yeah, yeah I know what. Probably a part of the reason why I'm in the seat is that we did honestly. There's a lot. There's very little language that's had to change for them. There's been a couple like if, if maybe it's a new play, but the language of maybe of that there's I I made it I put it upon myself you know feel like it's easier if one person learns than sixty other people. Right. So I came in and said, OK, I believe in all of these things. So we're good. And I learned all the terminology. And then if anything we brought in or decided to do or how we wanted to do it, then it was like, all right, does the, does the language, is it universal? Can we apply it? And we, one of the first things we sat down as a staff was like, all right, what's the universal language? All right, Coach Aiken, what do you tell the running backs to ball screen? So we're, we want to make sure everything we're saying between all of our coaches on staff, whether even if it's on special teams, if there's some verbiage that can carry over and the kids are hearing the same things over and over again, then it's, they can go out there and play. And there's no oh, – the only thing they really got to focus on is now the execution of the play rather than the, the what to do or how to say it or the translation of it, if that makes sense. So I took it upon myself to learn the majority of it. 
Matt Marshall. Oh, coach, a quick fo- Go ahead, Leo. A quick Go ahead. quick follow up to that. How important is it to coach the coaches on what you want? Because if they can't communicate it to their uh, individual group, you're kind of a lost cause, aren't you? Absolutely. And, and it's it it there's it's, there's no ego on it either. It's everyone coaches each other. Like I'll go to Mo, Coach Mo Bridge, I'll say, hey, what's your terminology when we want to get this done? When say it's a it's this blitz and we want to get the tackle and guard and center to to work together on what's your verbiage? Okay, and I I recollect I, I keep that in there. So then when it happens, hey, I, I'll be able to spit that same verbiage out to the guys. And then also it's like, all right, wait, when we teach this, make sure this is the communication we're saying. Again, make sure they're seeing this. The only thing they need to focus on, it, it's on is on me to clearly define. And if there's something too that I want that I know is already in place, it's on me to find out. So we spend a lot of our time. Well, actually, that's a great question. The coaches, that's what we meet on. That's why we're here so long is we're making sure that the most valuable time we have is when our players are here. So we've got to maximize our time to make sure everything that we do with them is extremely detailed and on point so then those kids can go out there and play and react rather than have to think, if that helps. Thank you, Coach. Matt Marcel. Hey, Travis, along those lines, um, you, a lot of staffs are adding you know, uh, analysts to kind of help you guys make your jobs a little easier. You know, what does an analyst bring to you, to your staff, and what does it bring to yourself as, as a coach that maybe helps you guys out on the field? You know, I, I've been around a lot of different places, and I've seen a lot of different ways analysts are used, right? I've seen guys that have had analysts that are essentially advisors. Um, I've seen people where analysts are pretty much guys that are data analysts and really just provide the information. Analysts are huge because they can allow, uh, like they, they, you talk about coaching the coaches, they can get a lot of stuff done for the coaches that the coaches used to do all on their own back then. They have to stay a lot later and whatnot. We can maximize a lot more time and get a lot more information in a much more efficient manner by delegating responsibilities and empowering those analysts because the analysts don't want to just, they're doing this not to analyze, they're doing this because they want to coach one day and they can't coach now. They have to sit back there during practice and not say anything. They have to watch. They can come talk to a coach. And that's it. Um, they can't talk to our players. They can't do anything. And so they, they, one of my jobs too is to, is to create an environment where making sure everybody's developing. And, and sometimes it's putting them in positions and responsibilities that they have a, a, a responsibility that they may not be used to. So they're having to, to adapt and, and maybe present something to the offensive staff. You know, maybe say, hey, this is what the opponent does in two minutes. And he comes up. So again, when you when those analysts want to go get full time jobs, whether it's a young guy or maybe it's an older guy who uh, is in between and wants to just kind of stay in something and help it. Like to me, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So if the more minds are together, and as long as we're, we're delegating the responsibilities correctly, you can get a lot done and a lot of information and it, have it in an efficient way. Then there's some places where I've been, they just hang out and they're buddies, right? So. Uh, I'm not going to say where, but <laughs> hey, you, uh, uh, we do a great job with our analysts here. We got some really good young coaches that are going to be really good coaches down the road, and uh, and I'm excited about our young staff. I think they do a great job, and and they're all going to be great coaches when they when they get out of here. Thanks, coach. Appreciate it. Will Turner, coach, I was really uh, impressed when we got a chance to see a, a Joe a Joe's just you know, agility and, and kind of what he's able to do for such a, such a big wide out. I know, you know, he's, he's, he's pushing 220 just over these first couple of days of spring practice, just, you know, uh, how, do you kind of feel the same thing, you know, just kind of what's your analysis of watching him as, as, you know, potential wide receiver one, or maybe a wide receiver two candidate. We're excited about a lot of our guys, but Joe has got a lot of ability that has been God given. No question. Like he's got a lot of ability, but Joe's in the, he, right now he's a guy that's got to be in love with the process as far as knowing what to do and how to do it. Not only on the field, but off field when it comes to academics, when it comes to uh, weight room, when it comes to training room and learning how to be a, not I won't say professional, but be a college football FBS player and what it takes on day and Cause he's got all the ability in the world. Um, he, he's a big guy. He's got good ball skills. Um, he, when he has when he knows what to do and how to do it, he does a very good job. It's just building on the you know he's got to continue to learn stuff because this is a new offense for him. He's one of the newcomers, just like all the newcomers. So he's in that same mold as 
all the guys, Myron Bound and all those guys that just got here, Jason Little John, you know, they're all having to learn again because it's carryover for the guys that have been here, but these new guys, this is all brand new. So he it's all brand new to him. He's learning. Um, but again, as, as long as he keeps progressing on and off the field, he'll have a chance. You know what I mean? But again, that's that's what all these young guys are going through. They're going through that maturity of learning how to handle your time and, and understand you got to get this done in order to do this. So as far as ability, he's got a lot of upside and he's got some things that are some pretty cool tools for a wide out that usually not at that size. So you get excited about that. But right now, it's just we're all process oriented right now when it comes to the day to day stuff. So those guys right now, we're honing in on just hey, school wise. You had this time to do today. Did you get done? OK, did you have any problems with this? Class? We're doing the same thing with academics as we are as football making sure those guys understand that it's just as important as the ballpark. Thanks, Coach. Joey Johnston. Yeah, Travis, I know when you took this job, a big part of it was your faith in this program and where you think it can go. This week, you know, we've had a lot of talk about the on-campus stadium in the future, but every day when you guys go out to practice, you are in the shadow of that indoor facility being constructed. You, it's, it's staring you right in the face every day. How motivating and exciting is that to have that as a backdrop tangibly right in front of you that where the future could be? It makes you want to work harder, in my opinion. You know, it's you see the investment and you see like you get excited and I'm going to make sure while I'm, I'm working. So I'm the one that gets going. It. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, honestly, that's like yeah. it's. Yeah, that's I, – I mean, I, I I mean, I'm really fired up to be here, guys. Like, this – like, University of South Florida, you know, the Tampa Bay area, like, this is a program that I've – like I told you all in my first intro press, like, it's it's a school I've respected for the longest time. And now that I'm here, man, it, it, it's exciting every day. When you call recruits and you talk to recruits and they get here, you're like – like, the belief is there and everything's there. But, you know, I want to be in that stadium. You know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to be here in that first game when we when we shoot that thing up. I want us to be a, a product offensively that everyone's like, that's it. That the coach, like I hope y'all stay forever. You know what I mean? Because like the identity of what we do offensively is what these what you know USF to be proud of. So to me, when I see that, it it lights a fire. If anything, that's already there, but it stares you right in the face, and it's exciting. You know what I mean? Some places you go and it's already there. It's still the same thing. But internally as a competitor, that's just how I think it. And one more thing, if I could. You know, early on in, in spring practice, practice six or wherever we are right now, um, who, who would you highlight offensively if you were to take the body of work you have so far and say, you know, these guys are really standing out? Who on your side of the ball would you say are those guys so far? Here are the guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you six guys that stand out because their habits of how they prepare, how they practice, number one, like the effort, the intensity, and how they talk about the attention to detail, like those things that we ask, we, we got three goals, protect the ball, right? Perfect effort and elite ATD, attention to detail. They they emphasize all of it. Number one, we were, without question. They were, like, you're about to hear from now, like he is as as great of a practice player as I've been around. I've been around a couple of really, really good ones. One of them just got named the receivers coach at the University of Tennessee because he was the lead at everything he did on and off the field. Weave is that way. Um, so he's one. Jimmy Horn's another one. Um, for a guy that was really young last year, how he approaches, he loves football. And he and he's such a great kid. So those two guys are off of and then And then these other, I'm going to probably list – Four here. Brad Cecil's one, another one. Really fired up about him, even though he has to take a snap. Just how he attacks everything, his mentality is everything that you want. Meach, Meach does a phenomenal job. He's a ball guy. He's gritty. I, I love everything about how he works. Donovan Jennings has been really, really good and, and, and has been has been a guy that stepped up. Like his toughness has taken a, a step up from what I saw from last year to now. And he was decent for last year. This, I mean, I'm really excited how Dono's taking things and becoming a leader, too. And then, and then Trey Jacobs stood out this week. The guy had a little bit of a bum ankle and fall through it and, and played his rear end off. So I'm I, those guys right there, I just listed, uh, what was it, seven, six? Six of them? Six. I listed six. 
yeah, those guys right now, I, I, I feel I want, I want them to get all the attention that they deserve because they've done things the right way every day to the standard that's going to pay to win a championship, the championship standard. That's not saying the other guys haven't there yet, but they're just not to that stand, they're that, that level yet. And that's why I'm excited about that group right there. And hopefully at the end of spring and for sure going into fall camp, I can list a couple more guys in that group. Hopefully. Thanks. Any other questions for Coach before we let him go today? All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Coach. All right, Jaron Mangum, we'll go ahead and get started. Joey Johnson, you want to kick us off again? Ryan, to raise your hand if you got questions for Jaron or Xavier coming up. Joey, go ahead. Hey, Jaron, could you give us an overview from your standpoint of Coach Trickett working with him in spring and the new offensive coordinator, how that's working for you and how it's working for the whole team? Um, well, I'm having a great time uh, learning from Coach Trickett. Uh, he's teaching me a lot of different things. Uh, really, Coach Trickett's whole like, identity with us is just focusing on the details, and uh, he's making us learn everything down to a T. And uh, I love that about him because he always expects the best from us, and uh, he always coaches us up. We can always uh, get coached, and we just got to go out there every day with a coach-me-coach mentality. 
Thanks. Leo Haggerty. You know, earlier this week, the coaches said that there was a play where a wide receiver caught the ball and just kind of stopped. And you ran over and said, okay, here's how we do it here. Yeah. How important is it for setting that precedent that this is what we're going to do now? Um, well, we just got to change that whole mentality. Uh, like Coach Scott always says, there's a standard and we got to make the standard the standard. And um, I was just chasing the ball, and I just realized uh, he stopped after the play, kind of, and I just told him, no, you just got to go finish that. You know, give me that 15-yard burst because in the game, you know, you're going you're gonna to give you your all on that play, right? So you got to treat the practice like game, so you got to treat practice reps like game reps. At least get your first down, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, help us out. Thanks. Joey Johnston, we'll go back to you. Go on mute, Joey. Yeah, Jaron, when you go out to practice every day, uh, you're staring right at that indoor facility being constructed. So you can see it with your own eyes that something's going on there. Um, how motivating is it for a player to see that? I mean, you know, hopefully be in it in the fall and be able to partake of that facility and you get to see it, see it change every day and progress. Um, I mean, it's very motivating, uh, you know, just if you come on USF campus just as a whole, I feel like it's just a new beginning for us, you know, like it's just a new identity is being built, you know, new PF, new IPF is being built, you know, a new culture is being built. Uh, it's just like, you know, we're just building a lot of different things and I just love where the program is headed right now. Um, I love Coach Scott. Uh, I just love just learning from him and just, uh, just taking it all in, you know. Um, it's just very exciting to just see where we end up at. And one more thing, if I could, um, how much urgency do you guys feel to get this thing turned around this season to be a winner, get to a bowl game, all of that to, to make it happen? Um, now? Well, I know for me, I want to turn around now. So that's how that's how we're working and that's how we're going to continue to work. Uh, why not now? Why wait? Gotcha. Thanks. Will Turner. Hey, Jaron, you guys added uh, Mikey Dukes this offseason is, is kind of and it was a definitely a splash grab grabbing somebody from from Clemson. Just, you know, what are your impressions of him and how do you see him helping the, the running back room this year? Uh, I love Dukes, man. Uh, he's a great uh, fit in our room. Uh, like I said, man, I love every one of those guys in that RB room. We all bring something unique and different to the table, which I love about that. And uh, Coach Aiken and Coach Trigger, they always going to put us in the best possible position to help us be successful. And uh, Mikey Dukes brings a lot of great things. Uh, he's very explosive, has great vision. He brings a lot of uh, different assets to the table. Thanks, Jaron. Joey Johnston. Yeah, Jaron, uh, this time last year, actually more toward the summer, you know, when you were coming in, everybody knew, you know, here's a big back coming in. He, he could probably help the team, uh, you know, a lot of potential here now. Your resume has 15 rushing touchdowns on it. We know what you can do. We know how you can help the team. How much more confident are you that you put that on your resume and 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 you you can build on that now? Um. Well, I was always kind of really confident in myself, and uh, last year I just wanted to prove to myself all over again that uh, you know I could do it, and uh, why not me? And um, uh, with the success that I had, you know, uh, we still lack team results, so that's what I'm trying to focus on this year and. Uh, just make sure that I'm uplifting and bringing everyone else along with me. And also, um, I know, you know, there's only one ball and you got a lot of backs. Like, how, mm -hmm. what's your feeling on kind of your work, your preferred workload? I mean, I know you'd probably like carry as much as you could, but we're, we're you know, the way the way you're used, is that, uh, are, are you on point with that, with Coach Trekker? Um, what do you have planned for you? I'm never, I'm never going to complain about anything. Uh, I'm always grateful. Um, so, and I know we got a lot of guys that bring a lot of different things to the table. My whole mentality and what I tell the guys every single day is whenever you do get the ball in your hands, make sure you make it count. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Jaron before we let him go today? All right. Thank you, Jaron. Hey, y'all have a blessed day, man. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. You too.
Xavier Weaver. Leo, you want to kick us off on this one? Go ahead. I'd love to, Brian. And Joey, I'll save you a seat. I'm getting ready to jump into the SEC. But uh, ha have you had that aha moment yet where the coordinator just stopped practice and said, this is how we're doing it now? You talk, you, oh, you're talking to me? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, nah, really, really, I don't think he, you know, we just go every practice, go hard at every practice and stuff like that. So, it's still, it's still coming along. We still got some ways to go and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure it'll happen soon. What's the biggest difference between last year and this year now with, with the new coordinator? Uh, you know, this uh, sixth practice, fifth practice, you know, and um, it's just we, we've been moving fast. It feels like we haven't missed a beat yet. You know, uh, a lot of new guys and new uh, pieces in it seem like they fitting right in. So, so far, it's going real smooth. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Joey, go ahead. Xavier, Coach Trickett was in a few minutes ago, and he, he gave you a lot of praise for how you're going about things this spring. How would you describe your mentality and the way you're approaching your job this spring that would make him, uh, you know, say that about you? Uh, yes, sir. You know, I'm, I'm just uh, approaching it the same way I did last year, you know, just same mindset, just going out there, work hard, you know, uh, everything's not given, you know, just going out there like this could be your last snap. So, I just try to do that every day I come out on the field. I know my brothers and stuff do the same thing as well on that field. So as long as we all come out there and, and give our 100% effort, then all the pieces should fall in together. And one, one more if I could. You know, every day when you guys go out to practice, you get to see the indoor under construction. Uh, it's right there in front of you. It's not a, it's not a theory. It's reality. Yes, sir. Um, what, what does that do when you get to see it, you know, every day? Uh, how, how exciting is it? How motivating is it to know that's in your future? Oh yeah, it's, de it's definitely a bit motivation, you know. Uh, especially they just announced how we about to get the um, indoor facility and how we about to get the on-campus stadium and stuff. So just knowing that we laying down the foundation from from what's about to come in, in pre on past years, you know, it's it's a blessing. Just knowing in a couple months we'll be playing in that, practicing in the facility. No, no rain could cancel our practice. No light lightning and stuff like that. So it's it's a real big blessing. Shout out to our donors. Thank you, Bill Turner. Hey, X, man, uh, when we were watching practice the other day, that first day you had a, a, a great over-the-top grab. I mean, it just – it looks like the game is starting to really, really, really slow down for you and, and almost making it look like it's getting easier for, for you out there. Just, you know, how much is the game slowing down for you, if at all, and just kind of what's your mentality with it? Yes, sir. The game definitely is slowing down a lot, you know, the uh... – a lot of the tools that Coach Bentley and, and Coach Trickett and Coach Scott and instilled in us, you know, it's starting to work. When you when you actually put the piece together on the field and just listen to what they're saying, it the, the whole game will slow down for everybody. You know, it's just I, I'm real motivated. You know, with what we got going on, and I'm excited. And then you guys added, uh, you know, a couple pieces to this wide receiver room. A Joe, a Joe, uh, you know, just uh, is one of them. Just you know, what's kind of been your impression of these newcomers that have entered the room this year? Yes, sir. Uh, that, it, they came in. It just seemed like they already knew the playbook. It, you know, they coming in with a, with a, a good mindset, uh, working mentality. Uh, they already good, good, getting reps, good reps. Uh, we got Kay Roberts, Shafi Brown, uh, Joe and Joe, you know, they coming in. They ready to take somebody's spot. Thanks, X. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Weaver? Joey, go ahead. Yeah, Xavier, um, since you've been here, you know, you've had a lot of individual success but not so much on the team uh how how motivating is it for you and for everybody to win now to get stuff done to go to a bowl game do all the things you want to do and not just something that's going to happen in the future you want it you want it to happen in 2022 yes sir that's def that's definitely the plan you know uh change is you know we always um preparing for change so change is definitely getting ready to come and we're just excited to to for y'all to witness it you know for y'all to see all the hard work that you say you guys come out watch watch this practice and stuff y'all see it so just know it's coming. One more thing, if I could, uh, and I don't, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since the uh, last game of the year. Uh, you made a catch on that final drive against UCF. Um, that was one heck of a catch. You had to watch it a few times to appreciate it. I just wonder, as you think back on it now, as time has passed, and I'm sure you've seen it, was that one of your better ones? And what did you think of kind of how you executed that one? 
Uh, you know, I just seen the ball, so I went and got it. You know, a lot of people said that was probably the best catch they seen me do, but you know, uh, I feel like I've been doing this for a while. But you know, um, I feel like that was probably uh, one of my favorite catches. Even though, you know, I wish that would have caught, caught uh, the game for us. You know, we went down there and sealed the game. But you know, overall, I think I like that catch though. Thank you. Yes, sir.